Hi, it's Andy N. Yes, today I'm going to read an extract for my debut novel, Birth. Birth is about the birth of a creative person. And this is the prologue. When the first buckle flew over my head, I was lost in thought, waiting silently for Danny to finish off his guitar solo so I could come back with a bridge to finish off the song. I'd given up two gigs before trying to play rhythm alongside Danny on that song, and we also had to just let Danny fly with his solo after the struggle I had keeping up with him on the second guitar. I would eventually decide instead I would stand there giving the impression I was in the middle of a deep, reflective moment while Danny's guitar roared all around me, reflecting on the torment flying round in my mind, which was probably why I missed that first bog almost hit me in the face. The song itself had come together quickly, before during our second rehearsal, and I'd proved a favourite for all of us, almost straight away, and Danny asked me what I'd been writing in my note, but I fell out my pocket shortly after I'd walked through his front door. And within moments, it started some deep, almost magical calls out of nowhere that made me almost whisper in a stunned silence. Tara's face was the best when she just looked at him after he'd finished his simple head. How the hell am I going to play anything over the top of that? That was just before Eric and Brownie had joined the band, and I didn't doubt they were the same who had been there at that time. I was still in the beginner stage of playing guitar, although I'd been doing okay with it. I had no chance of keeping up with him on that song, and wisely gave up a few rehearsals later, when Danny's electro guitar playing left my head spinning after trying to leave it to keep up. And left it. Eric and Brown had played the back in my tab dropped in and out the keyboards, using singing sometimes more to back me more than anything else. On that night, all things considered, it'd been a pretty decent gig. Until that thing happened. The club which we had played at was hard, booked to San Ben support and now long forgotten Irish trio a couple of weeks previously. Of all, I wasn't sure to this day whether the lead singer fancied Danny more, truth be told, than us as a band. I put a good word in behind the bar for us, who offered a headline spot the following month. And we flew through the first three songs with a ton of energy, leaving me stood there, and when we got to the third song, Ghost of the Empire, thinking simply, wow. After it began to kick off, I looked over at Danny, who had started guitar solo again, thinking clearly he'd missed that cue to come back in. Tara whispered a bit more urgently as second buckle flew over my head. Danny. He looked up, without missing a note, with the sound of his car and said, Oh, shit. Eric simply stopped looking at us, grabbed his bass under his arm and ran with no hesitation. I couldn't blame him. I really couldn't blame him. Brownie, despite being the gentle, quiet giant among us, was furious. And I actually fought for a few seconds to go and jump into the crowd and take on everybody single-handed for Tara got in front of him. A little frame somehow managed to persuade the near seven-foot giant off stage quickly. I was stood there frozen in shock. shock. Danny put his arm around me. Come on, lad. We better get out of here if it really gets nasty. I've seen crowds much worse than this before now. He was right, of course. As I looked out towards Dave, stood there, not one. With two chairs, his arm screaming, and anybody dared come near him. Come on, I'll take on the bloody lot of you. I don't know what had been said to him, but his face was bright red. He turned up, joined the sound track, and said, maybe his big booming voice, I could want to see you lot play tonight. He'd had a few beers, which was fair. As Danny just me off stage, but had gone wild and swinging, hitting anybody that come near him by that stage. The police. Arrived quickly. By the time they arrived, all the hell had literally broken out. The windows by the bar had gone smashed. Some of the landlords prized 300 bar whiskey and two legs in the bull table had smashed. It didn't get any much better morning after even. 